Latin America is often seen as boring in alternate history. Just look at these radical changes in the map between 1920 and 2020. Wow, amazing. But there was one period where even Latin America was an interesting battlefield of interests. Patagonia was still unclaimed, Bolivia was still big, there were weak leftover ideals of a pan-Spanish state, and there was still conflict to be had. One of the lesser known but more interesting potential border changes have to do with this small, seemingly insignificant state down here, Paraguay. Because despite the size of the nation, their leader, Francisco Solano Lopez, had big dreams. Brazil involved itself in a civil war in Uruguay, Paraguay did the same, and eventually, small Paraguay found itself at war with Brazil, Uruguay, and Argentina at the same time. Instead of being quickly crushed, as this map would suggest, despite their small size, Paraguay had developed an impressive military in preparation for exactly a war like this with their larger neighbors. So initially, Paraguay did quite well in their war with Brazil, pushing and holding the line. Then when Argentina joined the war, again it was Paraguay that took the initiative, pushing down the river towards the sea. But at the end of the day, Paraguay couldn't keep up a war with their two larger neighbors forever. The war would take six years, until 1870 to complete, and cost Paraguay up to 70% of their population in casualties, scarring the small nation. But Paraguay clearly started off having success. What would it have taken for Paraguay to succeed, and what were their goals if they did? So, how do we make Paraguay win? Well, it's not actually that difficult to imagine. The Paraguayan armies were larger, and arguably more modern than their neighbors, allowing for their early victories. The Brazilians had difficulty mobilizing, while the Argentinians never really got heavily involved in the war at all. Paraguay was also an industrializing state, while both of their opponents were primarily agricultural based. At the end of the day, there were two main factors that did Paraguay under. Its population was simply much smaller, and the Brazilians managed to gain naval supremacy. You may look at this map and say, but PH, Paraguay is landlocked, what naval supremacy? But what my political maps usually don't show are rivers. This impressive set of South American rivers is what most of this fighting was about, as Paraguay hoped to expand to take control over said river system. So, when Brazil took naval control over the rivers, Paraguay couldn't import from the wider world anymore, lowering the output of Paraguayan factories, meaning that Brazil now had the harassment and transport advantage over the Paraguayans. So, how do we make Paraguay win the war? We changed the crucial battle of Riachello. The Paraguayans had a brilliant plan. During the night, when the Brazilians had landed ashore, the Paraguayans would board and steal the Brazilian ships, essentially doubling the Paraguayan navy in size while decimating the Brazilian one. Were this to be successful, this would have been a brilliant plan, but it was never even attempted. Instead, the local Paraguayan commodore decided to fire on the Brazilian ships, and the resulting naval battle became a disaster. Now, we don't know for certain if the initial plan would have been successful, but for the sake of this scenario, we will assume that they are. The Paraguayans now have naval supremacy, and thus, a way to trade with the outside world more easily. This doesn't necessarily guarantee a Paraguayan victory, but I think is the cleanest way to tip the balance towards Paraguay. We could also just say, Lopez is a military genius, or Paraguay imports more modern guns and artillery, but at the end of the day, Paraguay is still a small, poor and insignificant nation, so this would be increasingly unrealistic. With their now naval supremacy, the Paraguayans pull their attention down south, defending their Brazilian front line while pushing against Argentina down the river. The Paraguayans advance fast, and eventually, the Argentinians have to sue for peace, while Uruguay becomes something of a Paraguayan puppet state. We can go two ways from here. We could say that Paraguay keeps going into Brazil, and takes a significant chunk from them as well, creating this super Paraguay, but I personally think that this is unrealistic. The Brazilians wouldn't want to give up their south, and would know that, eventually, their sides would likely be able to grind down the Paraguayans. So instead, Brazil does still surrender, but most of their significant southern territories aren't stripped away by Paraguay, creating this as the new map of South America. This war would have been a major upset, as basically everyone expected Paraguay to eventually lose. Especially the US and Britain would be rooting against Paraguay and would be shocked by their sudden victory. But what's next? Argentina would be most devastated by this war, losing the monopoly on a very important river and losing some prime agricultural land in the process. This would likely also result in Argentina under Domingo Sarmiento to more heavily invest in industrial development themselves, 
As the disappointing defeat against the Paraguayans has shown the need for industry if the Argentinians want any hope at winning a future war. Meanwhile, Brazil would be mostly impacted in their societal mental state. In terms of land, not much has been lost. But Brazil has been increasingly positioning itself as the South American superpower. And being defeated by Paraguay doesn't quite bolster that image. The war would also have been very costly on Brazil, but in our timeline, they paid this off extremely quickly. So I have no doubt that Brazil would manage just fine economically. Much like in Argentina though, the need for somewhat of an industrial base and fast mobilization system would be clear to all. But obviously, the biggest change would be in Paraguay itself. They went from a small rump state to controlling one of the most important regions of Latin America. But not all is well for Paraguay either. Their population is still very small and many would have still died in this war. While the territories they conquered were great in terms of potential, but for now, very underdeveloped. Meanwhile, Paraguay has puppeted, or perhaps even annexed Uruguay, while Uruguay doesn't want to be part of Paraguay and has a similar population to Paraguay. Then obviously, there is the constant fear that Brazil, and especially Argentina, will eventually want to come back to reclaim lost lands, while Uruguay poses the constant threat of attempting to seek independence. The new Paraguayan position would be tenuous, to say the least. Furthermore, Paraguay would have international issues as well. They are ruled by a dictatorship and are internationally disliked, with both the US and Britain preferring the larger, more liberal and more easily influenced economies in Brazil and Argentina over Paraguay. It would be very difficult for Paraguay to compete with Brazil and Argentina in terms of international relations. And these constant international challenges and threats, combined with the undoubtedly skyrocketed popularity of their dictator, would lead Paraguay down the road of becoming a paranoid, militaristic dictatorship. Before the war, Paraguay's large army was to ensure that they wouldn't be trampled on by their larger neighbors, but now, their larger army is a necessity of life, since there is no doubt in anyone's mind what Argentina and Brazil plan to do with the small nation if they get the chance. Despite Paraguay's increased size, Brazil still outnumbers the Paraguayans 10 to 1, and even Argentina was still more populous. And that is assuming that Uruguay is loyal to Paraguay, which I also somewhat doubt. In the future development of Latin America, Paraguay would not prosper as you might think from their expansion. As they would be neglecting some of the most prosperous regions in the world because they simply lack the population to fully utilize the land. Yes, Paraguay is more industrialized than their neighbors, but they are still a poor nation and their population gives them a glass ceiling impossible to break in the short term. Now you may ask, wouldn't the industrialized state of Paraguay get a lot of immigration? Well, I don't think so. Sure, Paraguay could start giving out land to European immigrants to convince them to come over, but so could Brazil and Argentina, as well as the US. The difference? Paraguay is a paranoid dictatorship, while the others have varying form of stable and even democratic regimes. Of course, slowly but steadily, immigration would come to Paraguay, but it would come faster to Brazil and Argentina further increasing the relative disparity between the three states. So now, the big question of this alternate history becomes, would Paraguay's success last? For some time, absolutely. Argentina would be too weak to try again, where Brazil may want to, but they have the luxury of time on their side, as practically all long-term trends massively favor Brazil over the puny Paraguay. But that's the short term. In the long term, Uruguay wants independence, Argentina wants their land back, and Brazil wants to reassert their status as the South American power, and even the as of yet unmentioned neighbor in Bolivia wouldn't mind seeing Paraguay disappear, as the two nations have some disputed territories between themselves as well. In my opinion, it is undeniable that a round two would be on the horizon at some point in the future, as over time, the advantages just stack up more and more against Paraguay. Even if Paraguay manages to find friends abroad like Germany, there is no way that this support can compare to the backing of the economic hegemons that, that Britain and the United States are in the Americas. Year after year, Paraguay's relative position weakens more and more. So, what people often do in these scenarios is tie a second Paraguayan war into the First World War. I mostly disagree with this assessment, since there is little reason to tie the two wars together, and realistically speaking, by 1914, Paraguay would already be hopelessly outmatched by their neighbors, meaning that their neighbors have little reason to wait for World War I to strike. But Paraguay had managed to win the first war through luck and skill, but anyone can see that the odds aren't in their favor for a round two. 
But let's take a quick look at a scenario where the Second Paraguayan War does happen during World War I. What would it, hypothetically, look like? Well, Brazil and Argentina would likely join the Entente powers, because like mentioned before, Britain would way prefer them over Paraguay, and since Germany has very little power projection in the Americas, joining the Central Powers would be very dangerous for these Latin American nations. In response, Paraguay could join the Central Powers, and as should be clear from this map, Paraguay has little hope in this conflict. Germany wouldn't really be able to help Paraguay in this war all across the world, and even with a tiny bit of British support, Paraguay would be subdued, and the South American theater becomes little more than a piece of trivia. So, whenever it happens, I don't think that Paraguay's supremacy would hold. That doesn't mean that the maps of South America aren't impacted though. Let's assume that Bolivia still gets defeated by Chile and Argentina, but Paraguay stays out of it. We could say that Paraguay does get involved and grab some land, but that barely changes anything and just ensures that Bolivia will join the eventual anti-Paraguay coalition. So, let's assume that at some point during the 90th or 20th century, Brazil and Argentina beat Paraguay. What's next? Well obviously, Argentina and Brazil would reclaim their lost lands first. Uruguay may become independent again, but depending on their level of integration into Paraguay at this point, Brazil could also reclaim them as spoils of war. It is also not impossible to think that Argentina and Brazil, in a fit of revanchism, completely ends the existence of Paraguay, although, to save their own international reputation, they may refrain from this. The main differences found in this scenario is in the economic development of Latin America. Argentina would never become the very temporary economic powerhouse that they were in our timeline, and the territories around Paraguay's small empire would be underdeveloped when compared to our own timeline, as they have lacked around 50 years of immigration and development under Brazil, independent Uruguay or Argentina. But what if Paraguay does hold onto these territories? Well then, it all depends on the political development of Paraguay. I don't think it's likely that Paraguay becomes a democracy following their victory in the war, since the legacy of their dictator is secured by military victories and the fear of a second war is imminent. If we assume that Francisco Lopez, the Paraguayan dictator, lives to be around 70, he would be the Paraguayan dictator until around 1900, weakening relations and immigration for the entire duration of his rule. But if after his rule somehow a more responsible government develops, there is a slight possibility that Paraguay's relation with the UK and US starts to improve and immigration can start to get going. But even then, put yourselves in the shoes of an investor or a government official in Britain or the US. You have the choice to either be friendly with the governments of Paraguay or Bolivia, Brazil and Argentina. From a purely business perspective, Paraguay will remain the Latin American underdog in the eyes of the foreign powers. But if Paraguay does manage to hold onto these territories into the modern day, they will become a moderately powerful Latin American country thanks to the rich potential of the Rio de la Plata region. But even then, historians will always be complaining about the great potential that was wasted because of Paraguay's actions. With that, I will end this scenario. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the content, consider subscribing and leaving a like and a comment to help against the algorithm. A special thanks to Lord Atlantean, Yoshi, Jonathan White, Predinator, Rayshot151, John, Przemek Petrotsky, Firelord Marklin, Dinkelberg and Slayer for supporting me on Patreon. Consider supporting me there for about a week's worth of early access to videos and a shout out at the end of every video. Again, thank you all for watching and goodbye.